thought we'd see if we couldn't do some stroboscopic stuff. So we're gonna get this we're gonna get this set up here so we can. Find the equatorial region of our stator magnet here. Let's see it goes across there. So that's where we're gonna that's where we're gonna put our line. You see that? We've already marked these as south north, so we know that the north side of this is attracted to the south side there. Conversely, the south side here is attracted to the north side there, so I've been marking the north. And that's what we're going to do here. We're going to mark the north. Okay. And then that, that way we know where that equator is. <coughs> you can do the same thing on the, on the rotor here. You can see the equator line right through there. So. That's the midpoint of the magnets that are embedded in the rotor here. So we're going to put a mark right there. That's, that's where our equator is. And our last one. Like that. So those are our equator marks. So in between these two is your north and in between these two is your south. Screws are just about the midpoint, but they're just a little bit off if you look in. You know, they're a little bit that direction. Anyways, so there we go. And what's this all about? This is about the manual manipulation of, of the rotor. Um, if, we, if we get that thing going there, we can see that we can just, you know, just by rocking that back and forth, we can keep that going. And there's two different ways. And I'm going to try and get the strobe going here in a minute. And we'll see if we can't get both different ways on film. Um, one, one way is when you get, when you get past that equator line, if you can feel a repulsion and you push into it trying to feel there it is so I'm pushing pushing in towards the rotor on the, on the back side of that heel right there pushing in pushing in pushing in pushing in pushing in so every time we come up to a north you know as we're passing the equator line these two push and then you push past it like that and it, it um, and then the other way is we actually get like a synchronization you see how the rotor is synced there and we get like that synchronization when we're rocking back and forth and then just as we're passing the equator just as we're coming up to it we kind of pull it away and that does the same thing. So in one case we're attracting and in the other case we're repel repelling. So you can do it either way. You can either push on the back side of the hill or you can pull on the front side of the hill. And um, you can see the shear line as it goes past. Okay, let's set this up in stroboscopic and see if we can actually trap some of those. There's strobe mode. There we go. Let's see if we can get some. Figure out where those things are. If I run out of tape, I don't know what to say. I 
I think I'm doing both here guys I, I can feel pressure on both ends so I think I'm pulling it okay, we're gonna try and get this and uh, I had to rewind the tape and record over what I did before but hopefully with the strobe already set up we can see how that works and uh, I'll append this to the other one and then hopefully that'll give us what we're looking for ran out of tape before I got a chance to zoom in on it so you know what's on my priorities get more tape or go get a digital system like my dad's got that's a pretty nice deal I like this one because it's got the strobe and the uh, 1 over 10,000 frame rate so that's pretty cool a little bit of going backwards the other way there so you can see that it goes both ways and um, a bit of momentum once it's going the momentum of that rotor will carry it right past the shear line no problem at all and that's part of the secret to this whole thing doesn't take much you know I'd say that probably an eight-year-old kid could sit here and do this and within an hour or two he would learn where those pressure points are but trying to map that guys I think we're going to be hard-pressed to get a mathematical algorithm that perfectly matches what we're doing with our fingers here and uh, it'd be nice to figure out how much energy we're putting into it you know to keep it going so there you go optimally if we had a system that took took this when it's at rest like that right on that equatorial line and flipped that puppy 180 degrees and just held it like that it would all go all the way over to this line and then flip it again 180 degrees I think I went one line too far yeah went one line too far go to that line and flip it again 180 degrees go to that line flip it again 180 degrees just like that if we had a motor that could do that say then we wouldn't we would get a lot more torque out of this thing than what we're doing here manually because that's that's really that's really the way this thing needs to work and it's probably pretty close to what Al did in his video only his 180 was was, was circular alright there we go doesn't take much to just keep it going does it one pole can go I think about six six uh, poles six and once you once you get the momentum of that rotor one two three four five six got that and so however much energy that is it's interesting to me that that single pole on this guy and produce six shears across that line and that's why we're able to get it to keep going